still one of the top teams in the state and still one of the top prospects in the state. We're talking to the sophomore, AJ Silianoff, about this Park City lacrosse season. Also, we're headed over to the Diamond, where the Wasatch baseball team has had a less than ideal start to their 2022 campaign, but their record might deceive you. And finally, a Park City Olympian adjusts to life and competition back on his home turf. All that and more coming right now on The Scoreboard. Hey everyone, welcome on into The Scoreboard. I'm your host, Blake O'Ruling. It's Friday, March 25th. Happy Friday to everyone. We're very excited to have you in this jam-packed show. Later on in the show, we're gonna have Brent Martindale sitting down with Wasatch baseball coach, McKay Jacobson. We've also got Brigham Harris talking to the sophomore goalie and one of the leaders of the Park City lacrosse team in AJ Silinoff. And then going on right now, uh, we're gonna kick off the show with an interview with one of our Olympians here in Park City. Steven Schumann is a home homegrown Park City local who competed in the Beijing Olympics just a couple of weeks ago. So with that, here's Brigham Harris talking to Stephen Schumann. Hey, what's up guys? Brigham Harris here for the School Board and School Board Nation. And right now we are joined with Stephen Schumann, a Park City resident, Park City local, who has got an incredible ski background. We're excited to talk to you uh, here today, Stephen. Thank you for taking some time. Yeah, thank you. Excited to, to chat about ski jumping. Yeah, for sure. Well, let's get right into it. The first question I wanted to ask, you're just a, a couple weeks removed from a massive ski event that a lot of our viewers may know of as the Winter Olympics. Tell me what your experience was like in Beijing as a first time Olympian. Yeah. Yeah, it was incredible. I mean, the Olympics is a super special event that only happens every four years. Um, so anytime you get an opportunity to compete there, it's it's obviously special. Uh, you're there with the best athletes in the world, meet other athletes from sports that you may not be familiar with. And um, yeah, everyone brings their A game. So it's it's overall just a, a super cool experience. Yeah, I was going to ask if you were kind of shell shocked in Beijing, but all your life, you've kind of been so immersed in the sport. You've been competing from a very young age. Um, let's talk just a little bit about your upbringing. Um, tell me just a, a little bit about what got you into ski jumping and the Nordic combined event in general. Yeah, so I started ski jumping when I was five years old. I actually came up here to the Olympic Park and uh, walked up to the top of the ski jump and there were some people jumping. Um, they lifted me up over the gate and I sat down on the stair at the top of the hill and uh, watched ski jumping for an hour and a half and that was pretty much it for ski jumping. I fell in love immediately and then uh, my dad got me into Nordic skiing because he did a little bit when he was younger. Uh, so at seven years old, he started me out Nordic skiing and um, yeah, I don't know. That one took a little longer to fall in love with because it's a little bit harder. Um, but yeah, I just just kind of fell in and been doing it ever since. That's awesome. Yeah. You were you were named to the uh, USA national team when you were just at the age of 16, if if yeah. I'm correct. Mm -hmm. Tell me what it's been like. It's been what six, seven years now since you were named to that team. Yeah. What are some things that you've learned? Some changes that you've made at, since being 16 years yeah, old? Yeah, I mean, obviously a lot changes. Um, get to spend some time with some of the older athletes. Get to have more experience. Um, you know, I've competed in significantly more international competitions now, so much more comfortable uh, with competing with some of the best athletes. And um, yeah, had had lots of experience since since then. I blew out both my knees since then. Um, so kind of, kind of been through a lot of different things and it's definitely helped me to grow up in a little bit different way than normal, but, um, yeah, super appreciative for it. Yeah. Don't want to bring you back to yeah. a, a darker time, but in 2018, if I'm correct, you blew out your left knee and yep. in 2019 you blew out your right knee. Yep. What has the recovery process been like to basically relearn how to do everything you do? Yeah, it was really long. Um, so both, both injuries basically took a full year to recover from, to get back to, to ski jumping and then um, once you're back on the hill it takes a little bit of time to figure that out again with confidence and um, just pain and all that stuff so uh, it took a long time um, luckily coming into the Olympics I had a full summer season of training and uh, was able to, to capitalize on that and, and come in and perform in a decent fashion um, at the Olympics so yeah yeah 
what has growing up in Park City uh, sort of molded you to be able to do? I'm sure a lot of uh, athletes who come from Park City that compete in the Olympics, if they were born and raised, say, in southern Utah, they wouldn't have this sort of experience. But right. being born and raised in such an area like this, how, what does it do for you? Yeah, I mean, obviously the Olympic legacy from 2002 is super prevalent. Um, still have a lot of the facilities, like the ski jumps here. Um, without the Olympics from 2002, I think there are a lot of athletes that wouldn't have gone to, to the 2022 Olympic Games. So um, growing up here, I obviously had that influence. And then just the ski culture um, in Utah is obviously huge. There's so many ski resorts and um, grew up loving skiing and all my friends grew up loving skiing. So um, yeah, we all do it because we love the sport. Yeah. yeah. Well, you, you love the sport so much that you traveled all the way across the world, were isolated for three weeks in Beijing, and now you're back, and this weekend, actually here in Park City in Soldier Hollow, you are competing again. Tell me just a little bit about the event that we're going to be seeing this weekend. Yeah, so we have uh, Nordic Combined Continental Cup. Um, so we'll have two events on Saturday. Uh, we have a mass start event, so we'll all start a cross-country ski race together, um, and then whoever finishes that first, second, third will finish that. Um, and then later in the evening, I think at like six or seven, uh, we have the jumping portion of Nordic Combined. Um, so based on how well we skied, uh, there will be a point system to uh, basically adjust whoever wins the jumping and um, it'll balance out between cross country and ski jumping. Uh, and then on Sunday, it's normal Nordic Combined, uh, a little bit easier to figure out if you're unfamiliar, but uh, we'll jump first and then the winner of the ski jumping event uh, we'll start a cross-country ski race, and then the first person across the line uh, will win the overall Nordic combined. So, nice. being three weeks removed, three or four weeks removed from the Olympics, do events like this seem a little bit less, uh, say, important or a little bit less uh, intimidating? Uh, maybe a little less intimidating. Um, it's still fun, though. It's the same guys. We compete with the same guys all the time, so uh, it's the same level. Um, yeah, it's 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 still a ton of fun. We're here for here to have a good time and and show our our best results and perform for everyone that's watching. Yes, sir. Well, thank you again so much, uh, Stephen Schumann, Park City local uh, Olympic athlete here for for just a, a few weeks in Beijing. But we're certainly going to be seeing you in the years to come. For still, sure. still a very uh, young young competitor, and we thank you so much for your time and good yeah. luck this weekend. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, of course, man. Two potentially career-ending injuries, and he still comes out as one of the top athletes in the entire world. Steven, thank you so much for sitting down with us. We really appreciate it. When we come back, a young goalie leads one of the top teams in the entire state of Utah. AJ Silioff gives us a little preview into how he thinks this lacrosse season will go. Coming up on The Scoreboard. The Scoreboard is proudly sponsored by Andrea Cox Mortgage. Welcome to First Rate Mortgage. My name's James and I've been in the market for mortgages several times over the years, so I've gone through the process with different people. And uh, when I met Andrea, she explained to me why my current loans were subpar and how she could get better loans with better rates. If I had to describe Andrea in one word, I think I would use the word passionate. She is very passionate about what she does and getting the right solutions for her clients. Uh, and that made her an absolute pleasure to work with. Hi, I'm Andrea Cox. You can reach me at 435-631-9262. Call me, text me, or you can reach me on my website, andreacoxmortgage.com. Four twenty-four. That is the saving percentage of a sophomore against the top team in the entire state, against some of the top players in the entire state. And guess what? He's only a sophomore. Brigham Harris got the chance to talk to AJ Silianoff following their loss to Corner Canyon. However, it wasn't a loss in all the ways that we may think because the Park City boys lacrosse team is looking as good as ever. So here's Brigham Harris talking to AJ Silianoff following that game. Hey, what's up, everyone? Brigham Harris here for the scoreboard. Right now, we are hanging out with AJ Silianoff. AJ, you are the starting goalie, just a, a sophomore for this Park City Miners team, and you guys just faced off against a really, really tough Corner Canyon team. Give me your first thoughts just after stepping off the field. First thoughts, Corner Canyon is definitely really strong. They have a very strong offense, very good shooters, but our defense played really smart and really hard and did what they had to do. We had a few minor mistakes and we paid for them, but overall I think we did a pretty good job against Corner Canyon. Yeah, for sure. This was a state title rematch. Yeah. Last year, you know, you guys faced Corner Canyon. They're a 6A school, Park City just 5A, just barely 5A. You guys were 3A just a few years ago, so this is obviously a big jump in, in competition. Um, tell me just a little bit about what it was like to take 
the field against a, I guess you could call this a budding rivalry now, as you guys are now, uh, you know, you face each other a couple times in some pretty heated games. Yeah, so I remember most of their faces, and in the beginning it got really chippy. There's a little trash talk on the field. The refs got a little angry at us for that. Yeah. But, you know, we came out, we came out at them and gave it our all. Yeah. So I think we did pretty good. I, honestly, I think so too. The, the score didn't necessarily reflect it. You guys came back in those last yeah. few minutes scoring four or five goals. Uh, what was the game plan going into this game? I'm sure you knew about Mason Quick, but tell me just a little bit what the game plan was. So our game plan was to play smart. We know we aren't the biggest, fastest kids out there, but we know we could be the smartest, so we were trying to communicate as much as possible and move quickly on the field and give it all 100% of the time. If you're tired, sub off, and if you're not tired, keep going as hard as you can. Yeah. Um, your story in and of itself is pretty interesting. You were a freshman last year. You got some varsity minutes as a ninth grader, which to me is just crazy to hear. And now you're the sophomore, you're the goalie, you're the guy for this team. You may be one of the younger guys, but you're a leader. Tell me what it means to you to be a, a starter on this team at such a young age. You know, it means a lot. Like when I would watch high school lacrosse when I was in seventh, sixth grade, I would imagine being on there. And now I'm here and it's really cool to be out here. But being a leader on the field is really important as a goalie. You know, you have to keep everyone heads up you know you're the one that sees it all and everyone you know you got to keep them up got to keep them going and it's a really big part of the goalie position yeah well you had some amazing saves tonight we could hear you communicating with your team you're obviously a, a vocal leader on the field what's it like playing against a corner canyon a 6a defending state champion team is it different than facing a lot of 5a teams like olympus or murray yeah definitely they definitely move the ball a lot quicker and they move a lot off ball um, you'll see on some of the man down, we just will get lost and there'll be a new cutter coming in and that we would just see last second. And all, their ball movement is really good. You know, they spin the ball really fast. Unlike some other teams that will hold it for a bit and then move it, they just keep on going. Yeah. What was it like playing against Mason Quick? You guys had to play against him last year. This year he's a senior. What was it like facing off against number seven? You know, it, it's a big pressure having him shoot on you, knowing like who he is and how good he is. But, you know, you just got to treat him like anyone else. He's, a, he's just a lacrosse player. Yeah. Um, this is the first year that the UHSAA has made the state tournament specific to 4A, 5A, and 6A. Instead of having you guys all, you know, seated and then put in together, um, how do you feel you guys match up after losing a pretty close game to a 6A team last year? How do you feel you match up in the 5A state tournament this year? You know, we have to see how it goes. We haven't played any of our region games yet, um, but I think we'll do pretty good. Our region games are later, so we'll get more experience, more fluidity throughout the team. And, you know, against our 6A teams, I think we did pretty good against Corner Canyon especially. Our defense was definitely talking and moving how we should, and, yeah, that's how, that's how we're going to do it. <laughs> No, uh, we're super excited for the rest of the season. Maybe if you could just give me one game that you're specifically excited about or, or maybe a, a particular goal you have for your sophomore season. Um, my, my, the game I'm most like, anticipating is the Brian game because that's our school rival. And I have a lot of friends on that team that I played with in youth. And, you know, it's fun to play with kids that you know. And, you know, they're a good team. They have strong shooters. They have strong defense. So we're just going to come out, hit them as hard as we can, and try, try our best. Yeah. Well, sorry, last question. I know I said the last one, but this is my last one. What are some things you guys specifically are going to want to work on from this, this game tonight? I, again, you guys shot the ball really well. You spoke really well on defense, like you said. But what are some things you guys are going to tactically work on tomorrow and until the next game? Um, definitely head on a swivel. I mean, we got lost on our man down a few times, let a guy open on the backside. So we're just going to try to, you know, keep our head on a swivel, see that backside guy and cover them and rotate our defense as we should. All right. Well, we look forward to, to catching up with you again. Uh, AJ Sillianoff, the starting goalkeeper uh, for the Park City Miners boys lacrosse team. Again, man, we wish you the best of luck and we look forward to talking to you again soon. Thank you. Hey, AJ, congratulations and good luck to the team for the rest of the season. We're going to continue to be covering you, Chase Beyer, Keller Hopkins, all of the amazing talent that you guys have over at Park City High School. And when we come back, a talented squad who is coming up just a little short. Brent Martindale talks to head coach McKay Jacobson about the start to their 2022 baseball season. Hi, guys, I'm Janet the Dairy King. We're famous here for our ice cream. We have 84 different kinds of shapes. We also have some amazing food. So come and try our chicken strips, our fish and chips dinners, our burgers, 
our fries, our sweet potato fries. Oh my gosh, we've got so much. Once you go over to the Heber Valley Railroad and ride their train, then of course you have to come here and see all of our trains. Our family serving your family since 1946. We hope to see you soon here at the Dairy King. Hey everyone, welcome back into The Scoreboard. I'm your host, Blake O'Ruin. It is Friday, March 25th, and we are gonna jump right back into some more interviews in this jam-packed episode. Here's Brent Martindale talking to McKay Jacobson of Wasatch Baseball, who was kicking off their season a little bit slower than they would have liked to, but those games are being decided very, very closely. So here is Brent Martindale with McKay Jacobson. Wasatch High School Boys Baseball competed in the Desert Hill Summit Invitational this last weekend, right to the beginning of spring break. And with us to talk about that is new head coach McKay Jacobson, again, the new head coach at Wasatch High School Boys Baseball Coach. Thanks so much for joining us to talk a little bit about your yeah, first weekend. Yeah. It's nice to have yeah. baseball again, huh? It is. It's so nice to be out on the field again. <laughs> and, and, you know, good weather. I, I think you had some good weather down in St. George. You did. It's always up in the air going down to St. George, but we didn't have any snow or rain and we were able to get out there. So, well, a great weekend. I know the record isn't uh, showing what you want. One and three came out one and three with four games, but every loss by only one run. Uh, I was able to listen a little bit on the radio and, and it sounds like you guys are uh, doing great. Coach, tell us quickly first, this is your first season. Uh, I know you've helped with the team. Tell us just a little bit about your background really quickly before we talk a little bit about sure. these teams. Yeah, so I'm originally from Dallas, Texas. I went to a high school called Flower Mound uh, High School. It was a really big baseball school. Um, and from there, I went to BYU and played for a few years. And then I coached down a little bit at Sky Ridge and then came up here and coached with Coach Baird last year. Um, just love baseball, but more importantly, I just love working with the kids and helping them become better men. That's like our whole mission as a coaching staff is to help these boys develop and grow into respectful young men. So, well, and you helped them. So you helped them last year, of course, and uh, you do have a few guys returning. Tell me just a little bit, coach, where, uh, where you think you're at at this point in just the first few weeks of the season. Oh, we're feeling awesome. Like, even though we went one and three down in St. George, I think I told the boys, we don't have to be red hot right now. Uh, we just need to get a feel for what guys we need in what situations. And as long as we're on the uphill and going up the whole time and getting red hot by May, then we'll be in good shape. And we can talk about it when we get into the games, but we were neck and neck with every team. And they, we, we faced some tough teams, probably the toughest opening series that um, maybe Wasatch has seen in a while. So Really tough teams. Uh, let's talk first about the first game. I don't know if you call it a rivalry. There's always been kind of a Wasatch Park City rivalry, but the first game of the season right off, Park City. Uh, final score is Park City 6, Wasatch 5. Tell us just a little bit about, uh, is that a rivalry? Is that something that's there? I, I guess so. I mean, there that was a good Park City team. Like in the past, they've been good, but I think this is probably their best team they've had in a while. Okay. And they came out and swung it, and they were pretty clean defensively, and they had some pitchers. Um, we came out super nervous. Our first three innings, it took us about three or four innings to kind of get the jitters out, to kind of get comfortable. We had a few guys that haven't really – we have a lot of returners, but we had a few guys that haven't seen a varsity game yet. And so they were trying to get comfortable, trying to get uh, – feeling like the more confident. And so they uh, – they were just a little nervous, but once we got over that, we were we were smooth sailing. So, Park City looks like they scored most of their runs in the first few innings. Then you held them yeah. the rest of the game. Yeah, uh, just couldn't quite catch them. Who uh, stood out for you? Casey Anderson was looking really good on the mound. He was throwing it where we needed to do. We just uh, we didn't make the plays behind him. I think it was the either the first or second inning. We kind of threw the ball around. There was there was one there was one play where we threw the ball clear into the outfield and they had it inside the park home run. It was just a Oh, it was just a circus, the first right, couple of right, innings. Okay. Little things coming. like that, okay. But then once we kind of got settled and Casey got a little more dialed in and we started making the plays and started swinging the bats a little bit, we held them and we just couldn't come back and quite pull it off. But So the second game on Friday, Carbon High School, who has an outstanding reputation over the years, mm -hmm. multiple state championships. Yeah, they're a really um, good 3A team. 
very, very good team. Uh, I lived in Price for 15 years, and we watched them for years. Uh, you got a big win over a tough carbon team. Yeah, and it was that was a good win because we were able to use our bullpen to go out and win that game. We used three, I think, three guys that are going to be kind of relievers for us this season, but we were able to use them as starters and then long relievers and kind of get get them some some time um, in that way. And they came out and, and did exactly what they were supposed to do. So it was a, it was a good win for our, our. Coach, thank you so much for your time. We're actually going to come right back into this interview when we come back from a quick commercial break. More with head coach McKay Jacobson and the talented Wasatch baseball team coming up. Hey everyone, welcome back into The Scoreboard. I'm your host, Blake O'Rulian. Now we're gonna jump right back into that interview with Brent Martindale and McKay Jacobson. Being the second game on Friday, who pitched for you there? Um, so Garrett Baxter uh, was the starting pitcher. Um, and, and you then, mentioned the relievers, yeah. So. Yeah, yeah, and then, uh, sorry, you put me on the spot here. I'm trying to think back. <laughs> um, You're mostly thinking Sam of the next Gagan. game, right? <laughs> yes, Sam Gagan came in and threw a little bit. And then um, maybe we only, I'm trying to remember. Well, yeah, uh, I know those two were kind of the ones that came in at the get go. So, and, and it looks like you got a lot of runs, eight runs, the most runs you had in a game over the weekend. Yep. Who's hitting well for you right now? Right now, I, I mean, Crew Erickson is, is hitting the ball really well, just getting on base almost every time he's in the box. Uh, Chet Wilson is also a guy that if we've got runners in scoring position, we know he's going to get guys in. And I throw on top of that, Peyton Swap hit a bomb down in St. George, and Jackson Bolander also hit a bomb down in St. George. We're, that was we're the one I was ball. listening to. I heard Peyton Swap's big, big monster hit. Sounds like, uh, yeah. Sounds like uh, Chet Wilson led the weekend in RBIs. Yeah, he was killing. Uh, but, but most of many, many guys contributing. Okay, so the Saturday games, Orem, a tough Orem team. Wow, what can you say? They're a good. Close yeah, seven absolutely. six loss to a very good Orem team. Yeah, they uh, they came out and threw one of their their top dudes. Wow. And we just battled with them the whole time. It was kind of back and forth. And we we had a lead going into the last couple innings and uh, just couldn't close it out. We're still kind of looking for a closer in our pitching staff. And I think that's what kind of hurt us this weekend is we'd get, we'd get ahead or we'd come back and, and be within a few runs and then just we couldn't find a pitcher that would just come in and shut it down for us. So we're still kind of up in the air about who we want to close. Um, but that's kind of what happened that game is we, we came out swinging. Like, like I said, like one through nine, our guys are all swinging it. I'm really impressed with our offense. Our pitching staff is really good. We just need to find that. that a lot of runs, a lot of runs this weekend compared to one of the first weekends last year yeah. uh, where there weren't very many friends, but uh, right. that's gotta be a good sign. The last game on Saturday, with the host Desert Hills, another really good team, yeah. uh, and another one-run loss, eight to seven. Coach, that's the wow. type of thing that your first year, you're already losing sleep at night. <laughs> yeah. No, it was good. Like, I was talking with our uh, pitching coach, Coach Watkins, about it afterwards, and even though we came out one and three, we just, we feel really good about where we're at, just as as a team, as a, as a whole team. Um, we used everybody this whole weekend. I don't think there was one guy that we couldn't use. I, I forgot to mention Jackson Kelson in that Orem game. He came out and just yeah. absolutely shoved. Good. And uh, he's going to be really good for us this year. That Desert Hills game, Jackson Bolder has been our varsity starting pitcher for the past four years at Wasatch. Right. He came out and, and gave up some runs the first two or three innings. We talked to him afterwards, and he said he just felt, he felt awkward. He didn't feel quite himself quite comfortable. And so it took him about three innings to get settled. But once he got settled, he, he came in and, and got it done. Um, that's a good team. Desert Hills just can hit the ball. Yeah. Those, they've got those first seven or eight guys just hitting the ball to the gaps. Just every, every, but every time they scored, we came back and scored. And it was just a dog fight. 
back and forth the entire game. So I was I was really impressed with our guys that we just never we never gave in. We were super resilient and just um, always in the fight, just the whole game. Coach, we have uh, multiple, multiple weekends coming up. Before you know it, the season will be over. But for the first weekend, it sounds like you're pleased. Uh, Bob, what's next for Wasatch? Yeah, so we head down to Snow Canyon, not this weekend, but the following for another four-game tournament. Okay. And we've got some good teams that we're going to play there. We're going to play Riverton. Um, we're going to play – oh, gosh, who else are we playing? There's some other good teams down there that we're, we're facing. Imagine. So it's a good weekend. And the first home game, not until about March 31st, if I look correctly on the schedule. And yep. uh, we'll be greatly game. looking forward to that already. Hopefully great weather. Well, Coach, we're going to get a chance, hopefully, to talk to you much more during the season. But we thank you for taking a few minutes with us here. And uh, we wish you the best of luck with your first year and the Wasatch Wasps. Coach, thank you so much for your time and good luck to the team for the rest of the season. We're going to be trying to make our way out there in the next couple of weeks to cover the team ourselves. So with that being said, when we come back, we're going to be winding down and teasing a little bit of what to come in the next week or so here on the scoreboard. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. With its world famous sandy beaches, stunning postcard views, and a laid back beach town vibe, welcome to San Diego. I'm Stephanie J. This is the Opulent Minute. Escape today to Whitefield Vistas in La Jolla. Originally built in 1928, this recently remodeled estate maintains its quaint classic feel while impressing with its rustic modern charm and bright decor. I'm here with Sarah with Toddler's Travels. Tell us a little bit about what services you provide. We're a full service baby and beach equipment rental company for traveling families coming to San Diego so you can travel hassle free with young children. Book now through our concierge services page on opulentvacations.com. Renowned master architect Russell Forrester designed the living room and downstairs suite, as well as the expansive decks surrounded by tropical gardens with an ocean view. This home is perfect for your next luxury vacation. Thanks for watching the Opulent Minute. Book now at Opulent vacations.com Hey everyone, welcome back into the scoreboard. I'm your host Blake O'Rulli and thank you so much for joining us today and next week we are going to be talking to some of the top talent in the entire state of Utah. I know we say that a lot but we really are talking to some incredible dynasties, incredible athletes and also some of the best teams that we get the chance to cover here on the scoreboard. We've got Paige Armanderas. She is the most efficient home run hitter and the most efficient in RBIs in the entire state of Utah girls softball. We've also got the Park City golf coach boys and girls in George Murphy. We're going to be talking to him a little bit about his 11 state titles over the course of his career as the golf coach here in Park City. We are also talking to one of the most dynamic and dominant teams in the Park City Miners hockey team. As you remember just a couple of months ago, they won the state championship. They ran through the competition here in Utah and they're currently in Dallas, Texas trying to compete for the national championship. So with that being said, we are going to be trying to talk to them this weekend and get them on the show next week. So very, very excited to talk to Jack Skilly and company. Make sure to check us out on our social media pages at Scoreboard Nation. You can also check out old episodes, old interviews at thescoreboardnation.com. And you can also check us out here on Park City TV at 6 and 10 p.m. every Tuesday and Friday. With that being said, I'm your host, Blake O'Rulian. Thank you so much for joining us, and we'll catch you next week week.